What's Micro Four Thirds then? And should you choose Micro Four Thirds or should you choose Full Frame? Both the answers to these questions will be found in today's video. Let's roll that intro. Let's start at the beginning. The Micro Four Thirds camera sensors are significantly smaller than that of a full frame sensor, which is 35 millimeters. To be exact, they are half the size. Why would you want a smaller sensor on a camera? I can hear you ask. Well, there are some specific benefits to having a smaller sensor. Let's start with the lenses. You can get smaller lenses at wide apertures, which fit on the Micro Four Thirds camera. Now, this is great if you're looking for a smaller, more lightweight system. Just take a look at these two lenses right here. The one is full frame and the other is Micro Four Thirds. I'm gonna let you guys figure out which is which. Also, the Micro Four Thirds lenses are cheaper, considerably cheaper. So they're smaller, they offer just as good quality and they're cheaper. I'm struggling to see a con with this. Also, let's get a tick for the Micro Four Thirds system when it comes to its telecentric optical path. That was difficult to say. This basically means that the light hits straight onto the sensor straighter at a 90 degree angle to give you nice lighter edges in your images. Also, you can get a nice side effect which is some better resolution off the center of your image. Micro Four Thirds is starting to sound pretty good, isn't it? Well, before you go running off to Jessup's and trading in all your camera gear for the Micro Four Thirds system, it's worth finding out a few things about this so that you know the pros and the cons. The first is the depth of field issue, and it kind of is a bit of an issue. Depth of field displays differently on a Micro Four Thirds camera to that of a full frame camera. I'm not gonna go down the rabbit hole with this one because it's a long, long, deep rabbit hole and I could be talking about this for the next 10 minutes. But of course, if you'd like a detailed explanation of this, I'll be more than happy to make a video. Just leave me a comment in the comment section and I'll make that at a later date. What you really need to know about this though is that the depth of field on a full frame camera is shallower than that on a micro four thirds. Now there is a few different things which determine this. Like I said, there's a lot involved, but basically put, that's what you get. This means that you're gonna have a better bokeh and a smoother, nicer blur in the background on a full frame camera. Let's now talk sensors. The full frame sensor is double the size of the Micro Four Thirds sensor. With a bigger size sensor, obviously this means you can fit on it more pixels. More pixels mean higher resolution and generally sharper images. Also, if you were to take both sensors and give them each the exactly same amount of pixels, let's say for this example, 24 megapixels, the larger sensor would actually have bigger pixels because of the larger sensor surface area. This is gonna result in a benefit of better low light performance. So this means that the full frame camera sensor is gonna perform better in low light conditions than your Micro Four Third sensor. What's really impressive about Micro Four Third cameras though, such as Panasonic G9, in fact, the whole Panasonic range, also the Olympus OMD E range, which is incredibly impressive, is the amount of features that they strap onto these cameras. This presents a photographer or a videographer that's on a lower budget with all of the high-end features that you would find on a top-end camera on a lot cheaper model, such as the Micro Four Thirds system. Micro Four Thirds camera systems have been able to achieve these extra features in two ways. The first one is the sensor. Because the sensor is smaller on a Micro Four Thirds camera, it's easier to maintain and keep cooler. And the benefit of this is that you get longer recording times with your 1080p and your 4K modes. You also get higher resolutions. You can have things like 4K at 60 frames per second. Because the sensor's smaller and it's a mirrorless camera system, you don't have such things like a mirror box or a pentaprism found on a DSLR. 
This gives you more room for extra features externally. You have all the ports you'd need, like the HDMI full size, you have the USB, you have the headphone out, you have the mic in, you have bigger batteries with extra shots. So many pros to the Micro Four Thirds system. It all sounds great, doesn't it? And honestly, it is. But here's the kicker. Is the time ticking on the Micro Four Thirds system? Well, why would I say that? Take a look at the full frame mirrorless cameras. Sony have released a whole range of cameras over the last two, three years, which have some really inspiring specs on it. You now have Nikon and Canon nipping at their heels. In fact, the gap between the features found on the Micro Four Thirds system and the mirrorless full frame system is now very close. And if you want to take a look even further at such brands like Fujifilm, they are creating crop sensor cameras which are bigger than the sensor found on Micro Four Thirds, pretty much with the exact same features. Here it is guys, if you're looking for a workhorse of a camera that offers you fantastic features for both photo and video, and it's small and lightweight, then Micro Four Thirds is definitely for you. It's sure to suit travel photographers and people looking to downsize their camera gear into a more compact and lightweight alternative. Say what you want about the Micro Four Thirds system though, I'm continually impressed by the amount of features that these small, incredible cameras offer, and I really think they are fantastic value for money, especially for videographers looking to get them extra features that you'd only find really on a full frame camera up in the thousands and thousands of pounds mark. Question of the day that I'm really curious about knowing is what camera system do you guys shoot with? Do you shoot with Micro Four Thirds or do you shoot with full frame? And I'd love to know why it is that you shoot with that. I wanna thank everyone watching today for your continued support on my channel and continuing to watch the videos that I make. I really am so appreciative of everything that you do to support the channel. And if you're new here, this is your first time arriving, consider hitting the subscribe button if you're into camera news, reviews, and how-tos. Whatever you do today, guys, make sure you have the best day you can, and I'll see you in the next video.